get to the top level, first you have to earn your stripes in this category. But to do that, you must overcome fear. Oh, there's some contact in the background. That's a very wild ride. It's headbutted. The Sonic Falcon survived heated battles. You see contact. He is really under pressure. Experience pure emotion. <laughs> and if you're lucky, create history. For the first time ever, these cars will take to a brand new circuit in Northern Queensland. And someone's name will stand forever in the record books as the first man to win a race on the streets of Townsville. This is round three of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. Well, we're halfway through the Fujitsu Series for this year and a brand new venue this weekend, the streets of Townsville, Damien White. And boy, oh boy, this new street track, no one really knows what to expect. You know, as if it isn't hard enough for the drivers and engineers to get the car right, the drivers this weekend have to deal with a completely new circuit which adds another exciting element to the mix. And this street circuit here in Townsville isn't a traditional street circuit like, say, in Adelaide. No, not at all. I mean, there's lots of concrete, but it's quite open like, like Albert Park. But for me, this weekend, the three hairpins are going to be critical for the drivers, the power down, the have to be patient on that power down to get a good run down the straight. There's been a lot going on in the Fujitsu paddock over the last six weeks since they last raced in round two at Winton. Perhaps the biggest news in Townsville is the arrival of Paul Morris, infamously known throughout V8 circles as the dirty, dangerous dude for his exploits in the car. After stepping out last year to run super cheap auto racing, he now steps back aboard in the Fujitsu series to get ready for the V8 Enduros later in the season. But before qualifying had even finished, this happened. Morris's victim was Rodney Jane, son of former Bathurst winner Bob. He makes his V8 debut this weekend in the second Sonic Falcon vacated by Bryce Washington. Yeah, I was running a career cup last year, so I did that for six years. And the first time I drove the car was about three weeks ago. I did a uh, test day at Winton, then did another one at Winton, and uh, yeah, that was really just coming to grips with the car. And then come up here, new track, uh, new car, so just sort of, you know, really trying to get myself into it. Some teams in the Fujitsu paddock have received some big news during the break. Receiving wild card entries into the championship endurance races at Phillip Island and Bathurst later in the year. Sonic Motor Racing received a call up, just two rounds into its first year of racing V8 supercars. The team has a few aces up its sleeve though. It now owns last year's Bathurst winning car, and James Moffat is probably the most motivated man in the field to take on the mountain. Dad pretty much put 30 years of his life into winning that race and uh, won it four times. So, uh, look, it obviously means a bit more than any other track and obviously it's, you know, the best race in Australia and everybody wants to be up there. So, uh, if we can get there this year, it'll be fantastic. Greg Murphy Racing is the only Holden team to receive the nod and driver Sam Walter knows it's a big challenge. I've been training a lot harder than we would have been, but it's a great relief. We only sort of found out Friday that everything was confirmed. Our uh, other driver, which will hopefully be Taz Douglas, is looking pretty good at the moment. MW Motorsport also secured a start, and team owner Matthew White must feel on a roll after his team's first round win of the year at Winton, thanks to their driver, Jonathan Webb. But unfortunately, he's already booked for Bathurst. Jono's been around a bit and knows, knows a lot of the team. He's got a drive with DJR and um, obviously they're going to put forward some pretty competitive gear. So it's a really good opportunity for him. Many other drivers in the series also look well placed for endurance races. Shane Price, who currently sits third in the Fujitsu series, has signed with Walkinshaw Racing. But he's had a shaky start this weekend with a decent shunt during practice. It was probably one of the bigger one of the bigger hits I've had. You know, look, we're assessing, you know, what could have happened now, and hopefully we can uh, fix it and get it ready for the qualifying. There have also been some murmurs about series leader David Russell, but right now he just needs to concentrate on getting good results at this new track. The main thing is to finish all three races, and, and if we do that in the top five, that's a that's a great result. If we can press on and we're in a position to. Um, to get race wins and podiums, um, I'll certainly be going for them. 
Coming into round three, and David Russell holds a 26-point advantage over Jonathan Webb. Shane Price in third, with 300 points available for the round win, 100 points for each race win. The Armourall Pole Position Award this weekend, though, goes for the first time in his career to James Moffat. Sonic Motor Racing take their first pole, too, at $2,000 to boot. To race one highlights and a good start was critical to a good result around any street circuit. The pole man, James Moffat, is often racing to turn one, but Damien Assailant from the second row has gone nowhere. Gone to dead last and they race through turn one. Big speed through there because it's a long run from the start line to turn one. David Russell looking down the outside at turn two, but single file down the inside. And we look here at the replay, look at the green Fujitsu car, Damien Assailant, good start initially, but then stalled. Grant Denyer was under pressure early. Big pressure coming from Jeff Emery, Taz Douglas also in the mix here. And Grant Denyer right on the limit there, the back of the car dancing over the bumps as the rear brakes almost locked. A replay at turn 13, and Paul Morris launching down the inside, caught him napping. Sam Walter became Paul Morris's second victim of the weekend. Morris closing in at turn 13, gets into the back of the Tasmanian and unloads the Commodore. And he's got to wait now. The whole field will go by. Shane Price was trying to turn around his early bad luck. From ninth on the grid in a repaired Commodore, the young Victorians on a charge. And now look at them side by side through turn three. This is the way you pay back a team who's worked tirelessly to fix the damage you caused. Grant can't fight here. He'll have to slot back in on the run back into Reed Park. Damien Assailant was pushing the new track's limits. Look at Assailant trying to get down the inside. Emery covers at turn seven. Look at the attitude in the car. He's taking unconventional lines, really leaning on the curbs. He's obviously frustrated with his start and he's taking it out. Look at the lock up from Emery. A rear brake, a front brake. And Daniel's down the inside and he's got all three of them in one go. Woohoo! Three in one corner. Awesome. How good was that? But Shane Price hasn't given up yet. Daniel, you're not going to get away with it that easy, son. James Moffat led from start to finish and has shown he'll be a handy asset later in the year. James Moffat, final turn. He won the first race of the championship on the streets of Adelaide. And it's on the streets of Townsville that the Sonic Ford will lead them home. And not only lead them home, Aaron, that is a dominant performance. I mean, even look at the team in the pit lane. Even they look professional. Michael Ritter, Scotty Mansfield and all the boys. Have got another win for Sonic. Jonathan Webb in second from David Russell. A strong drive from Brad Lowe. Paul Morris, controversial as always, rounding out the top ten. And Sam Walter managed to get to the line, but he was 14th clear of Todd Wanless in his first start for the season in the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. Paul Morris, there he is in pit lane. He's got a very unhappy Sam Walter. We're running fifth in the championship at the moment. We haven't got on top of the car in qualifying today. We admit that, so we qualified tenth. But in the race, first lap, we got up to fifth. We were running strong. In the second lap, I got Paul Morris. So it's very disappointing. I mean, I don't know why he's here. No one else in pit lane wants him here. Um, I've learned that from all my years of growing up motorsport, that he's burned his bridges in the other pit lane down there. So, you know, he really needs to have a look at really what he wants to do. Some unhappy drivers in the paddock here in Townsville will line up on the grid after the break and get started in race two.